There are many famous gem locales around the world, but one of my favorites is Madagascar. It's the fourth largest island in the world, and it's larger than Spain, Germany, and Texas. It's also one of the only 17 countries whose wildlife is considered to be mega diverse. But those aren't the reasons we're talking about it today. Its gemstone production is out of this world, and it might be just as diverse as its wildlife. In order to find out why, we've got to go back to its geological history, so let's get started. 200 million years ago, the Earth's surface looked pretty different from how it does today. South America, Africa, India, and the Arctic were all part of one huge slab of Earth, and what will become Madagascar was right there in the middle of it. As we know, gemstones require lots of heat and pressure to form, and being squeezed between giant continental plates is a great place to find both. Eventually, those continental plates separated, splitting Africa and getting dragged away by India before breaking off that relationship too, running its own unique chapter of geological history. So what can you find in Madagascar? I'm not kidding when I say nearly everything. Ruby, sapphire, emerald, tourmaline, garnet, the list goes on and on. Its gem mining area is twice the size of Sri Lanka and Myanmar combined, two of the industry's most famous locales. And that's just for mining sapphires and rubies. So let's talk about those. Madagascar actually entered the sapphire arena pretty recently, with the first stones being found in 1998. In just over 20 years, it has shown its value, providing about half of the world's sapphire. It doesn't just produce vivid blue sapphire, but pink, yellow, green, and that famous Padparacha hue too. Its rubies are beautiful as well, with some rivaling the color of the famous Myanmar rubies. These tend to come from Moramanga and have been dubbed Malagasy rubies, a name that harkens back to when the French ruled the island. Madagascar is sometimes referred to as Barrel Island, and for good reason. Aquamarines, including Cat's Eye, and emeralds have been found there as well as Morganite and Heliodor. In fact, morganite, the attractive pink variety of beryl, is the national gemstone of Madagascar. The quality and sheer quantity of the beryl found there has also helped give it that nickname. Not only that, but the world's largest naturally occurring crystal ever found was dug up on the island. A beryl 60 feet long and 11 feet across, it weighed 840,000 pounds. Granditerite is one of the rarest gemstones in the world, but guess where you can find it? If you're willing to off-road your way up the mountains in southern Madagascar and break your back using hammers and picks, you could take some home for yourself. Tourmaline can also be found on Madagascar in spades and in pretty much all varieties. Tourmaline gets its colors from mineral impurities, so the door is wide open when it comes to tourmaline. And considering the variety of gems you can already find on the island, you'd expect a rainbow of possible tourmalines too. One of the rarest varieties, Lyticotite, is a multicolored banded variety that's also found there. The French explorer Alfred Grandidier, for whom Grandidierite is named, took home a rubellite when tourmalines were first discovered on the island. I really could go on and on, but I'll just rattle off a few more stones you can find on this absolutely overloaded island. Quartz in amethyst, smoky, and rose varieties, as well as some natural citrine. Iolite, the trichroic, often transparent, deeply violet stone. You can also find labradorite that would make the Canadian stuff blush. Apatite can also be found, as well as many varieties of garnet, including color change and even demantoids. These have been found in the temperate northern part of the island, so that's where you'll catch me. No thanks on the desert or rainforest for my taste. Overall, Madagascar already produces magnificent gemstone material, but to many people, it has still yet to reach its full potential, which is exciting news. Unfortunately, much of the mining is on a small scale, mainly focused around small but rich deposits that are removed from the rest of the Madagascan civilization. This, coupled with regulatory issues, means that the mining industry has suffered in recent years, despite it being a large source of foreign investment. Keep your ear to the ground, though. If things go well for the island, Madagascar could be an even bigger player in the gem industry than it already is. 
That's all for today, guys. Tell me, would you brave the tropical sun and treacherous terrain for a rainbow of rocks? Let me know down in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching.